Brothers and sisters, welcome to the uh, Strike the Empire Back event. It's the first public event of the Malcolm X movement, which is, hasn't actually been launched yet. It will be launched next summer at the Malcolm X Festival. That's the first time in public that's been mentioned. There will also most likely to be a Malcolm X Film Festival for the actual martyrdom anniversary of Brother Malcolm in late February, early March 2015. First of all, I'd like to ask uh, God and the ancestors and the martyred ancestors to bless this event today and to, and, and to hopefully bless it and ensure that it's a success. Today is an afternoon of education and some entertainment, but really we're trying to focus on the histories and the legacies of successful examples of our people's struggle against white supremacy and neo-colonialism and what the decolonial theorists and activists call the colonial matrix of power which includes misogyny, the oppression of non-able-bodied people, of elderly people, and there's a whole, there's a whole matrix of oppressions which comes under the neo-colonial system, which is a global system in which we are all oppressed. The Malcolm X movement is an initiative of black and Asian, mostly younger people, but white brothers and sisters are also involved in it. Uh, my, my name is Sukhan Chandan, by the way, in case you didn't know, I'm one of the organizers, and I would now like to swiftly hand over to sisters, to sisters even, Pretty and Beatrice, and I'd like to give them a warm welcome to this event because it's the first time they have hosted such an event. Thank you. <laughs> Hello everyone. Hi. Greetings and blessings. Welcome to Strike the Empire Back. In the first section, we're going to have Brother Drew Shah to present us with um, his presentation. Unfortunately, Sister Margaret Andrews can't be here, but she sends her sincerest apologies because she's unwell at the moment, but she's keen to work with us in the future, so enjoy the event. Um, just to give you a little introduction to Thruv, uh, Thruv is one of the youngest and a very dedicated member of this movement. Um, he has a particular interest in uh, revolutionary ideology and culture, and in documenting his ideas through film. Uh, he will be presenting the revolutionary work of the Black Panther artist, Emery Douglas. So please all give a warm welcome to Brother Thrill. Um, em Emery Douglas turned 71 three weeks ago. Before joining the Black Panther Park, he was part of the Black Arts Movement at San Francisco State University as a set designer for the Black Communications Project. Amiri Baraka, rest in peace, who initiated the movement, articulated what the goals of the movement were. He said, one, create an art that was black in form, feeling and content. Two, he wanted to bring that art into the streets. He wanted a mass art out of the elitist dens of ambiguity. And so they performed in parks, on the streets and on the sidewalk, in vacant lots, housing projects, playgrounds, in front of bars and supermarkets. Three, they wanted a revolutionary art, not just skin flicks. They were Malcolm's children and, we, and wanted a Malcolm art, one that was itself an example of Malcolm's call for black self-determination, self-respect and self-defense, and plus W.E.B. Du Bois's self, um, true self-consciousness. Emery joined the party in 1967 during its initial stages, occupying the role of re revolutionary artist and later the Minister of Culture. Emery explained the role of re revolutionary art in a statement titled Revolutionary Art of Black Liberation in the Black Panther newspaper in 1968. In it he said, the Black Panther Party calls it revolutionary art. This kind of art enlightens the party to continue its vigorous attack against the enemy, as well as educate the masses of black people. We the Black Panther artists draw deadly pictures of the enemy, show that pictures that show him at his death door or dead. His bridges are blown up in our pictures, his institutions destroyed, and in the end he is lifeless. To quote Amir Baraka again, that was what Mao's cultural revolution was, actually an extension of what Lenin called for seeing the lack of revolutionary culture as one chief obstruction to carrying out the complete mandate of the Bolshevik revolution. Emery's art for the Black Panthers can be categorized in three phases. Phase one, his drawings of porcine pops came out of a counter campaign to support to a support to local com police campaign and he later ex extended the caricature to other oppressive forces, pol politicians, police and the military. Ronald Reagan, when he was California's governor, even made a 
pathetic attempt to transform the demeaning pig single symbol as an acronym for pride, integrity, gut. Phase two. Emery started drawing the brothers and sisters in the community, the Lumpren proletariat, in combat poses depicting the principle that the Black Panther Party was founded on, self-defense by any means necessary. Phase 3. Gun laws changed in 1967 due to the Moffat Act of the Panther Bill, introduced at the urging of the Oakland police. The bill proposed to put an end to the open legal carrying of weapons during the Panthers' patrols on the Oakland street. street. There are Thereon, the party decided to focus on the survival programs, free breakfast programs, health clinics, etc., and electorate politics, and this was reflected in the art. Before the Black Panther Party sold Emery's art as prints, posters, cards, they would put them up on the walls of the community. In, in effect, they were using the community as a gallery. In Danny Glover's words, the images were images the community embraced. They were so right on and so appropriate to the struggle at hand at the time, and a sense of self-determination ensued from those images that Emery created. Emery sought to connect African Americans to the rest of the African diaspora. His style of heavy black lines and patterns point to, the, tr point to traditional African art, which relied on abstract imagery and stylized, re stylized representation as opposed to realism valued in European art. The Black Panthers also influenced many of the third world third world organizations in the U.S. such as EH1, the Young Lords, the Brown Berets and Los Siete de la Raza whose <coughs> newspaper was published alongside the Black Panthers for a short time in 1969. The Black Panthers newspaper peak circulation 1970 to 1971 is estimated at 139,000 to 400,000. It contained local and international news. The Vietnam War was frequently covered Huey P. Newton, the party's chief theoretician, believed the state violence was inseparable from American aggression abroad. Seeking to internationalize the struggle, they joined hands with other third world revolutionaries. Emery, impressed with the posters coming out of Cuba, Vietnam, and China, reproduced some for the paper. He also worked with artists for the Cuban, with, in the Cuban organization OSPAL, the organization of solidarity with people of Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Artists from the Graphic Arts Collective of Post-Revolution Cuba was influenced by and influenced <coughs> Emery's work. Emery's art received even more international exposure when in the summer of 1969 the party were invited to send a delegation to the Pan-African Cultural Festival in, in Algeria. The crowd that went to see their exhibit was so large it spilled, spilled out onto the pavement. In Kathleen Cleaver's words, his art transcended the language barriers and captivated the onlookers out in the streets. Um, there will now be a slideshow of Emery's artwork um, on the board behind you. Thanks to Brother Drew Shah for sharing that presentation with us, one of our most important revolutionary artists. Everyone's welcome to ask him questions or give comments in the Q&A section of this event. And as we know, Emery Douglas has worked with some people in this movement as well, as you can see from copies of the Panther Legacy magazine, and that's available on sale here today as well. And we should always give thanks for the efforts of our elders as we try to emulate their brilliant example that they've set for us. 
and also we continue to work with Emery Douglas and the other elders of our struggle. So thank you for listening to Brother Drew Shah and if you can get a copy to support as well, that would be great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we're opening up the panel now, so please welcome Sister Zainab, uh, who will now be chairing the panel.